Even though electric vehicles have much less maintenance than their gas counterparts, there is a bit of a trade-off. So instead of worrying about a gas engine, transmission, and all of the maintenance that comes with that, you've now got a giant battery to worry about. This might seem like a bigger deal, but in my experience owning an electric car, it's been a lot easier and simpler than caring for a gas engine. Most modern electric cars utilize lithium ion cells, and just like other batteries, they are gonna lose some capacity over time. But these aren't the same exact batteries that you'll find in smartphones and other small electronics. These are much more technologically advanced and use a slightly different cell chemistry that allows them to last longer. EV batteries are designed to last the life of the car, and with the car's built-in battery management system, as well as you as the driver, you can ensure that your car will have minimal capacity loss over time. Being a lithium-ion battery, they are actually happiest at around 50%, so the farther you move away from that 50% mark, either high or low, that's when problems can start to arise and long-term battery damage can start. This means you want to avoid extreme states of charge, usually below 10% and above 90% are what you want to avoid. And that doesn't mean you can't let your car get to those states of charges, it just means that you shouldn't let it sit there for extended periods. So for example, if your battery is lower than 10%, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and plug that in as soon as you can. And if your battery is charged above 90%, then you probably wanna go drive right away and use up that extra energy. The lower states of charge are an easy one to remember because you're probably going to naturally plug your car in if it gets to below 20 or 10%. But just a quick reminder, this is the right thing to do with these batteries. Unlike older batteries, you do not need to let them discharge all the way before charging them again. It's best to just plug in as soon as your battery gets low. Another thing to remember here is if you are planning on storing your car long term and you're not going to be driving it a lot, it's best to leave it plugged in and set the charge limit to around 50%. Again, that's when the battery is going to be happiest and going to prolong your battery life when you do come back to drive your car. The last thing you can do to prolong your battery life and make sure you have a healthy battery long term is actually limiting how much you use DC fast chargers. And for Tesla vehicles, those are superchargers. I know these are very convenient and I utilize them all the time being someone without home charging, but it's really best reserved for road trips when you do need those quick fill ups. Doing so on a consistent basis is not great and it's best to stick to level one or level two charging for day-to-day -day charging. So what does this mean for actual driving and day-to-day -day charging habits? Well, for Tesla vehicles like iDrive, Tesla has stated that it is safe to charge up to 90% on a day day-to-day -day basis without significant long-term range loss or capacity loss in the battery. This is why inside the car and inside the app, you'll see it kind of snaps around the 90% mark. Charging above 90% is okay, but it is typically reserved for road trips and when you really need that range. So if you are going on a road trip and feel like you'll need that extra 10%, it's okay to charge up to that percent, but make sure you are driving right away. You're not leaving your car sit at above that 90% mark. So to keep things simple, I usually just leave my charge limit at 90% and don't worry about it and only change it if I really think I need that extra juice. And then if your charge rate has dropped below 20 or 10%, it's best to find a charger as soon as you can and plug in to get that charge level back up. And for charging, I would definitely utilize level two chargers as much as possible. I think they're the best for long-term battery health while also having faster charging speeds than just a regular wall outlet. And this is what I would recommend you get installed in your garage or driveway if you have that ability. Interestingly enough, I am actually doing the complete opposite of this right now. I don't live in a home and don't have access to charging at work like I used to since we're working from home. So I've been supercharging almost exclusively these past three months, which is probably the worst thing I could probably be doing for my battery right now. So I'll definitely check back in in a couple months to see if it's had any long-term effects on my battery or if my battery capacity has dropped at all. So that is all for this one. If I missed anything here, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I've also got an article from Battery University that's got a lot more technical information in it. If you're interested in that, what actually happens at those higher and lower state of, states of charge to the actual battery cell and what causes uh, long-term battery loss. I usually like to keep my videos open so that people without a technical background can understand what I'm talking about, but if you are interested in that, that is available. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.